Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can utilize LiveSync for your real-time workflow with iClone and NVIDIA Omniverse, which helps to enhance your render quality and speed up production time. Please be sure to check out the installation guide first in order to get everything set up properly. Let's start off by exploring how to do a quick transfer via LiveSync from one program to the other. As you may recall from the installation guide, to connect the programs, you can right-click on your USD file in Omniverse and copy the URL, then paste it into the Omniverse server URL field in iClone. Then proceed to hit the Live button in Omniverse USD Composer or Create to establish the connection. You can then switch to the preview camera on both sides to keep the views consistent. And remember to go into your root layer metadata and ensure that world axis is set to Z up and the time code per second is 60, the same as iClone. From there, you can select a character in iClone and click on the transfer button to send it over to USD Composer. Then repeat the process for the second one. If I play back in iClone, you can see that we don't currently have any motions applied, so I'm going to choose some from the content manager. Upon playback in iClone, you can see that the characters are flawlessly synchronized via Live Sync. However, if we open up the timeline in the USD Composer, there are no baked motions, since we only did a playback of those motions and not an actual transfer. To transfer over the motion, I need to pick the character who contains the motion I want to transfer, and then hit the Send Animation to Omniverse button from the iClone toolbar. After the transfer is complete, you can then refresh the timeline in Omniverse to play back and check it. I'll repeat the same process for the animation on my other character and play back once more. Since the programs are linked via Live Sync, I can select my female character and click on the Remove Selected Animation from Omniverse button in iClone which will then remove the animation from that particular character. I can then reapply the animation to Omniverse using the same process. One thing to keep in mind is that if the timeline in Omniverse is not set at frame 0 and I play back an iClone, the scene in Omniverse will not play back. To get them to play back together, you'll need to set the timeline in Omniverse at frame 0. Ok, so that's simple character and motion transfer, let's look at detailed transfer via Live Sync next. If you have a scenario with multiple characters and animations, you can transfer them all simultaneously using the Omniverse Live Sync panel in iClone, which can be opened from the toolbar. Under Transfer, choose Scene Mode and Include Motions. From there, select the two animated characters and click on Transfer File. Once I play back, you can see that the transfer of both characters and animations was successful. There are also a couple of live edit options that you can set as you wish. You can find out more about these on the official website or in the manual documentation. In the link tab, you can select or deselect the green light beside each item in your scene to connect or disconnect the linkage. If the item is not linked, it will not animate during playback. One more thing to be aware of is that if you have a character with Smooth Mesh activated for subdivision, there is a Subdivision Mesh option in the Transfer File settings that needs to be enabled if you want that subdivided mesh to transfer over to Omniverse. Finally, let's look at Best Workflow and Reference Transfer using this factory scene in Omniverse. You can hide unnecessary objects in the USD Composer and import the USD to iClone to conserve resources. Be sure to save the project in Omniverse before importing into iClone. Here I'm using the Import USD option from the Plugins menu in iClone and pasting the current USD URL link into the proper field. One alternate way that you can import your scene into iClone is to select a target object and then export a separate USD file from Omniverse. From there, you can manually import the USD file into iClone. Once that's done, 
you can open the scene manager in iClone and see that the reference mesh has been packed into a hierarchy. This reference mesh is useful for a scenario like this, where I've added multiple characters into the scene and I'm able to position them relative to the reference mesh. To get them all into Omniverse faster, you can multi-select them in the scene manager like so and transfer them all simultaneously from the toolbar. Keep in mind that if you use the transfer option from the toolbar that you will still need further transfers for the animations. iClone features like prop linkage can also be utilized. If I position this model properly and link it to the forklift here, I can move both model and forklift simultaneously in both programs. Furthermore, I can add in a separate box prop which will appear in both programs and also link it to the forklift in iClone for group movement. Lighting can also be simultaneously created and applied in both programs using LiveSync. Here I'm just transferring this group of props over to Omniverse, after which I can use the Create menu in Omniverse to bring in a cylindrical light, which will also show up in iClone. After that, you can adjust the various light parameters in iClone, such as the shape, multiplier, and color. The same goes with cameras. Here I have a number of cameras set up in my scene in USD Composer, and I can transfer them over using the same USD import option from the plugin menu in iClone. Only this time, I'll only select the camera's checkbox. After that, I can select my camera in the timeline in iClone, set a quick keyframe, and pan the camera to the side for a quick and easy animation. Camera switching is also compatible between the two programs. If I open the switcher track in the timeline in iClone, I can right click and set a different camera at various frames from the camera list. To get the camera switching sent over to Omniverse, I'll select the Editor Active Camera here, being sure to include motion for the full range for the camera movements I created earlier. After the transfer is complete, you'll find an RL switch camera in the USD Composer camera list. When you play back in Omniverse, you'll then see the camera switch complete with animation all transferred in flawlessly. That's it for this getting started tutorial for Omniverse LiveSync. This new and powerful workflow pipeline is great for utilizing the strengths of both tools to work efficiently and help make your project look its best. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.